Now the first thing I notice about this picture is that it's too blue. I need to warm it up. I took the picture in the shadow of our garage and yes, it's sunset. So there's some light that's reflected off of some nearby buildings and that's kind of what gives the, the, the soft, uh, slightly warmer light on her face versus her shoulder. That's what gives it that quality. Uh, but still mostly it was in the shade and so the camera captured it this way. It's, it's a little too blue. So I'm gonna warm that up. The way we do that in Lightroom is uh, come over here to the white balance controls. And I'm just gonna grab this one and warm it up some. That's too much, way too much. Drop it back down. Maybe back up a smidge. There. I like that. And this is already looking better. I'm gonna go back to the original version. You can see that. I compare it to a little bit warmer. And the next thing I think this picture needs is more contrast. Again, I took it in the shade, so not very dramatic lighting. There's a little more lighting on her face than the rest, uh, but not that much. It's very subtle, and so I think that if we I think if I increase the contrast, I'll be happier with this photo. Now the way that I used to do that is I used to just come down to the contrast slider and bump up the contrast slider. Um, I'm kind of not doing that at the moment because sometimes I find that what, what I wind up with is excessive harshness without uh, kind of, you know, what I want out of increased contrast, I just want the picture to kind of get a little more three-dimensional. And if I increase contrast too much, then then the darks become too dark and the lights become too saturated and it, it gives it this harshness that I'm, I'm not a fan of. This particular picture could probably go either way, but really the way to see when to use the contrast slider and when not to is to check your black point. If your black point is not snug right up against the edge of this histogram, then you're probably in a pretty good candidate to set the black point first before you start messing with the contrast. And that's what I'm going to do here. How about there? I'll check it full screen again. I like that quite a bit. Sometimes after I set the black point, I, I mess with the contrast, but I don't think I even need to do that. Oh, maybe. Maybe. I don't know, I haven't actually played with this. And you can see a contrast, you can get it. You can lessen the contrast too, but. Uh, I just slide this back and forth to find the right value. There. Let me go back to full screen so you can see. Now this is looking really nice. Here, let me reset the settings so you can see that the, this is the original versus this. And yeah, I could be I could be done here. Uh, one thing that I kind of like to see this is really an overused effect, um, this is particularly in the wedding industry and and whatnot. But uh, is lens vignetting? Lightroom has this function for lens vignetting to correct that, but you actually can add vignetting to uh, a picture that doesn't have it. This doesn't have it, and what I find is uh, just a little bit, just a little bit really helps focus the viewer's attention on the subject, particularly if the lighting is not as dramatic as I would like uh, as it is here. What this also does for this particular image is it really, it darkens in here and keeps this the same. So it kind of accentuates the light that's already there. Sometimes the vignetting can look really unnatural. Uh, and it's really obvious that they just, that somebody just ham-fistedly applied a vignette to a picture that isn't really uh, uh, all that great to begin with. And it, it just looks kind of hokey. Now the last thing about this picture that I think I'm gonna change, I didn't really even notice it until I started editing it. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm kind of wondering, what is that little thing underneath the hose? It looks like a piece of grass or something is stuck there. Um, I'm going to get rid of that. The way you get rid of that in Lightroom is you use the clone tool. And uh, I'm going to increase this cursor size a little bit there. And I just do a little bit of cloning at a time. Um, go back here and drag it down so I see where I'm getting these clone spots from. Now if you're just cloning out dust spots or you know smudges on somebody's face or or what have you I mean that's one thing the clone tool works pretty well in those situations when you're cloning out like a, a, a hair or something like this this long 
thin line, it's really easy to get artifacting, and you kind of gotta, you kind of gotta watch out for it. Uh, stripe is pretty nice. I click on it, and it just it knows to grab from an adjacent stripe spot. And I'm gonna check here to make sure I'm not, I'm not artifacting too badly. I'm gonna use the magic of video editing to make this go faster. And this part right here is a little bit of artifacting. I'm not happy with the clone tools not really following the edge of that curve, but uh, I guess that's good enough. And I'll come up here, get this green spot. That's not too bad, but right here I need a smaller brush. So I'm going to get a smaller brush, clone stamp some more. And I wish this was easier. I wish that I could just say, you know, go and it would go. Um, it's, it's hard. This part here is dark and it's going to frustrate me for uh, quite a while. It took a bit to, to get it so that it looked right. When I zoomed out it still it was too dark. But there we go, right there and there. And there we go. There's the final picture. So I'm going to just once again reset. So there's our original. We went from this which looks pretty good to this. Here, let me move the mouse out of the way. And there we go.